Let's take a look at question 15 on leet code, the three sum question. So this is an array question and it's really important that you watch the two sum question that I've solved on this channel. So check out that one. There's two two sum questions that we've solved. So the first two sum question, uh, it shows this interesting approach where rather than using a nested for loop with O of N squared time complexity, um, you know, we've used a sort of clever approach to make that O of N. So that was um, really interesting. And then the second part, it was the two number part two, which was the numbers were in uh, order, but you had to solve it with O of one space complexity. So to be able to do that, we needed to learn about the two point approach. So make sure you check that video out first um, because this three sum question is essentially the combination of the previous two sum uh, questions there. So let's just go through this. So given an integer array nums, return all the triplets where the index i is not equal to the index j, which isn't equal to the index k, and they're all equal to zero. And the solution set must not contain duplicate triplets. So, we don't want any duplicates, so we need to check for that. Uh, and then the target is zero. So rather than that being passed, we can just uh, you know check for zero in itself. So let's look at this example here. We've got this array of numbers here. Uh, and we can see that minus one plus one plus zero and minus one, minus one, plus two, they both sum up to uh, zero there. So we have an array of arrays or an array of the triplets. So, and we've got to be careful not to have a duplicate as the questions ask us. So minus one, that occurs two times in the array. So it's possible that you could have the combination minus one, zero, minus one, uh, but you could have uh, you know, the same numbers, but uh, that first one and the fifth one there, the numbers are reversed. So we need to make sure that we don't have that duplication. So intuitively, we know that this could be uh, O of N cubed, but we want to make this O of N squared using those techniques we described. So let's start by creating a triplets variable, which is the return type, the array of numbers. And at the end there, we're going to run and return those triplets. So rather than using three for loops, we saw that in um, two sum part two, that we're given a sorted array. So if we were to sort our array first, we could essentially break the problem down to iterating through each of the elements and then um, using the two pointer technique on the other ones. So we know that that's going to be um, O of N. And then if we have this outer loop, we'll have O of N. So that will essentially be an O of N squared. Um, and since O of N squared is greater than N log N, um, so I haven't talked about this yet, but if, hopefully you've seen the logarithm video. Um, but when you sort numbers, um, that's going to have a time complexity of n log n. So we'll go into, um, you know, how that occurs. But the n part is referring to you need to go through each of the numbers to be able to sort the numbers. And the log n part refers to, well, you know, when you divide things by two, um, you can halve the numbers each time, uh, which is faster than linear. And then that combination will be n log n. So we'll go into all sorts of sorting algorithms later on. But essentially, if you sort the numbers and you sort the numbers outside of the loop, essentially, if you've got like a sorting algorithm, which is n log of n, and then a nested for loop, which is n squared, the n squared time complexity will be the dominant part, the significant part. So we can more or less ignore the n log of n uh, because n squared is... Uh, more significant. So sorting the number, it helps us 
to get away from the triple for loop or the n cubed, which is really bad. And it will allow us to get to n squared, which uh, is the best we can do. So let's start by sorting our numbers. So we can use sort on our numbers. And we want the numbers to be in ascending order. So the numbers, first and el second element, we say a minus b. And sort in JavaScript just straight up mutates the numbers. So they'll um, give us our ascending numbers. And I might just put a little note here to say that we have an O of n log n time complexity. So then we're going to need to loop through our numbers. So let's just have a for loop here. And we're going to need to track the index because we're going to use pointers. Um, so when you're using pointers, you need to know what the index is. So uh, you can use this loop here. So we're looping through the number array. And then we want to loop through the remaining elements with the left and right pointers. Um, we're going so to need to go through the numbers again and okay so let's just write the time complexity first so the time complexity is going to be o of n squared it's not going to be o of n cubed because we want to do better than that um you could add on this o of n log n part but that's simplified to o of n squared uh because that's the dominant term so we want to get rid of this for loop and we want to make it a while loop because if you've seen the two sum part two, uh, we want the two pointers. Um, so the first number refers to the index, and then the number after that will be the left pointer, and the right pointer will be the last number. So let's just go ahead and just define these. So let L equal to um, I plus one. So whatever index we're on on the outer loop, the number next to that is going to be the uh, what we're calling the left pointer um, in a similar fashion to the two-pointer approach. So basically we're doing the two-pointer approach for each element or you're going through each element or each number in the array and for the remaining numbers after that we want to use the two-pointer approach. So that's why we've got this for loop and then we've got this nested uh, of n complexity um, so let's just define the right pointer as the last uh, element. So the index of the last element in the array. We can more or less use our two-pointer approach. And because we're guaranteed a solution, we can say, okay, you know, L will never equal R. And R will never be bigger than L because we're going to find a solution before we get there. And then if we were to get there, um, if a solution wasn't provided, which we know it is, um, we would end up just repeating the same numbers where the right pointer was pointing to the left pointer and the left pointer will be the index of the right pointer. Um, so the space complexity, we're going to need to push some stuff to the triplets, but we'll come back to that in a sec. So let's just consider that L, the left pointer, the left index, the smaller number, because they're sorted, is less than the right pointer. Uh, so the index should always be less than the right, because we've got this sorted array here. Um, and as you can see, you know, if you're on the numbers 3, that's the middle there, but if you've got 2 and 4, you'll eventually get 4 and 2. There's no real need to go pass then so hopefully that's clear and we're just going to use that two pointer approach in this for loop so while l is less than r well we can find the sum the sum simply the um, number of the index we're on in the outer loop plus the number corresponding to the L index and the R index or the L and R pointers there. Basically, if the sum is less than zero, we need to increment the L pointer because the sum needs to um, be equal to zero. So if it's less than zero, the number needs to be bigger. And the only way to do that is to move in this current iteration 
is for the element we're on, the left pointer needs to move across one because they'll make it that number corresponding to that pointer bigger. So we've considered the case sum smaller. Now, if the case is that the sum is greater, we just need to do the opposite. So the right pointer is the maximum value. So we need a smaller value. So we just move the right pointer across to the left because it's sorted, it'll be a smaller number. So if it's not smaller and the sum isn't greater, it means that the sum must be equal to the target, which is what we want. So in that case, we can use our triplets data structure, which is just an array of numbers, and we can push uh, the array of numbers that we want to it. So triplets is an array of arrays, so we can push an array to it, and we just want to push the uh, number corresponding to the particular element uh, we're iterating through on the outer loop and then we also want to have the number of the um, Corresponding to the L and the R pointers there because we know that Those will sum up to zero. We can make the space complexity here O of N um, Because we do need space for each of the triplets and it could be that all of the elements are triplets so you know, we need to consider assigning values for all of those. So O of N. So right at the outer array, as we're doing our first iteration over our elements, um, we need to consider if the element, if the value of the element is the same as the previous one. So if we're on the first element or the first number, it can't possibly be a duplicate. So we can only we consider the um, elements or the numbers after the first element. So we have this i must be greater than zero, where zero refers to the first element here. If we've found a triplet, we need to go to the next potential triplet. So in the outer loop, we're on that current iteration. Um, so what we do is we move the left pointer and we add uh, one to the index. So that may, when we go through the next no. while loop, um, you know, we can recalculate the sum and if that sum is equal to zero, it will do the if else if else check again. And we only have to do this on one side, so we don't need to subtract the right pointer as well because uh, then we'll miss out on that uh, potential set. So we just move the left pointer over. So essentially what we can do on the outer loop though is we can say, okay, well, if the number that we're on if the number is equal to the number before it, that means the outer loop or the number corresponding to the I index is the exact same. So line 16 there, uh, since L and R are the same, the sum is going to be the same and that means it will be a duplicate. So that's for the case of I being the same. So, sorry, not I, but the number corresponding to the ith index so if the outer loop you're looping through that if the value of that index is the same as the one previous to it then you'll get the duplicate sum so that just avoids that and then the continue just skips to the next iteration so in the else block this is where we say that the sums equal to the target and then we increment the uh, left pointer um, Now it could be the case that the left pointer the value or the number that uh, That index corresponds to that value could be the same for the next iteration So we also need to do a similar thing uh, In this else block here So we can just tack on a, um, a while loop here And we once again need to check L is less than R because we're going to increment L and we need to make sure that it doesn't go equal to R. So basically what we want to do is we just want to check that the number of the L index is not equal to the number of the L minus one index. 
and there will always be an L minus one index. Um, so if that's the case, we can just increment L. So we only have to do this on one side. We don't have to do this for the right side because if we do it for the left side, eventually it's going to, um, you know, go through all the numbers that you need. Um, so essentially we're just skipping the duplicates here. So let's go ahead and submit this code here. And we can see that that beats 99%. So that's really, really good. Um, and we've essentially combined the two sum uh, techniques. So the first technique was the two pointer. And then the other sort of approach we saw was, um, you know, making an N squared into an N, or in this case, uh, N cubed into N squared. So we've seen that. Um, so this is a really good question. So I think in the next video, I want to go into the sliding window technique.